the 2016 a level paper question number 7 explain how the existence of externalities leads to inefficient allocation of resources in an economy illustrate your answer with appropriate diagram yes which diagrams do we have to draw existence of externalities lead to inefficient allocation of resources remember uh, last time we had a on negative one production which one is this how the existence of externalities lead to inefficient allocation of resources illustrate your answer with appropriate diagrams so here guys they are not being specific on which one you have drawn so you have to draw all four i am not going into detail on all four guys we uh, okay i'll quickly draw all four okay so remember you have uh, four externalities one two three four so first we'll go on the production externalities then the consumption uh, on this side we'll have positive on this side we'll have negative production positive how do you draw one benefit curve remember production externalities you draw one benefit curve two cost curve production if positive means which uh, cost will be higher marginal private cost is higher than the marginal marginal social cost. this is the marginal private benefit equals marginal social benefit. Uh, production negative same thing marginal social cost is higher than the marginal private cost benefit curve i'm not labeling uh, for a consumption uh, what can we do one cost curve two benefit curves so which benefit curve is higher consumption positive marginal social benefit is higher than the marginal private benefit again one cost curve two benefit curves mar con consumption negative marginal private benefit is higher than the marginal social benefit so you need to draw all of this draw all of this and now it's only four mark question so your diagram itself will give you around half a mark so you need to draw all of this now what is inefficient allocation of resources that is either over producing or under producing no so next to each diagram you need to say so according to this one social optimal level is this one but you're producing only here right so therefore there is what there is an under production of a good which has a positive externality in production which leads to inefficiency in resource allocation same way right for the others uh, in this one social cost is here but you're producing in the green one so you're uh, over producing that kind of a thing you can you all figure out we have done this in detail i did it recently in the uh, doubt clearing session also in detail we do all four so draw all the four diagrams show whether there is an under production or over production you'll get your four marks i guess the four mark question i can't expect you to write uh, pages and pages on one so you draw all four diagrams show how it leads to inefficiency in resource allocation inefficiency in resource allocation means lamai you're either producing more or producing less producing more means you're allocating more than required resources for inefficiency in resource allocation. you're producing less means you're not allocating enough resources inefficiency in resource allocation. that is what it means okay now then question number two <sighs> what are public goods why cannot markets provide such public goods easy uh, when we say mpb mpb do we also write full form a uh, full form is not needed for a question like this now maybe on a side you can write the full forms and keep better it shows that you are a very neat and uh, nice uh, person so maybe in diagram you don't have time to write time, uh, space to write the full form on a side of your thing you can say msc equals uh, marginal social cost if you want write there on the side and can be nice what are public goods right this one we have been discussing over and over again so not going to talk too much public goods talk about the fact that it is non excludable and also non right talk about this and then after that why cannot markets easily provide such goods why can't markets easily provide such goods because of the fact that you can talk about they cannot charge a price okay so why can't why 
uh, can't they charge a price? They can't charge a price because even the people who do not pay cannot be excluded from consumption. Therefore, consumers will not be willing to pay for this. If you, even without paying, if you can get a public good, why will you pay? So, I like that fact. I like the fact that since consumers who do not pay a price cannot be excluded, consumers will not be willing to pay a price. So, if consumers are not willing to pay a price, that means a firm cannot earn a revenue, okay, no revenue, no profit. So, there is no revenue, no profit. Then you can highlight in a market economy, profit oriented producers will therefore not supply much good. So, that story, if you can explain, you'll get your four marks. Two marks for this, two marks for this. Is that okay? That's an easy question. 2016, part two. Then, part three. What are the objectives of taxation? What are the objectives of taxation? Why does the government impose taxes? For what reason? Okay, we can say uh, to minimize to minimize uh, disparities in income distribution. In income distribution, so they tax the rich people, they give it to the poor. That is fine. Uh, okay, to discourage to discourage consumption of demerit goods. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. To, uh, you can say, for example, uh, to collect revenue. That's another objective to collect revenue to cover government expenditure uh, to affect, or you can say, to control aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Negative external part, we can put it over here, second one itself. Uh, anything else? Mm, those are the main ones, no? if you write four, it's enough. So, what are the objectives? They are only asking, what nila mai? You don't have to explain. But now in your paper, if you feel a little uh, bad, yes, to improve allocation of resources, that also you can put into part two, the whole thing. Uh, to encourage the consumption of merit goods, you will not tax, right? You will reduce taxes. Not a main point there. Okay. So, remember, Lama, in your paper, if they say what, you don't have to explain. You can just write points like this. But now, sometimes in your paper, you will feel bad you know, after writing points like this. You will be like, are you? Writing points are more than enough. Huh? You will be like, are you? I have so much of time. If you really want, write a line or two. Please don't go and write pages and pages. Don't write a big paragraph or on five lines. Don't do that. Uh, you can write a small line. For example, minimizing income disparities. No? So you can put a small dash and say, uh, in order to do this, government can charge progressive taxes and tax individuals with higher income and use that money to, let's say, uh, to provide transfers to the poor. That's all. Don't go and write more. Uh, let's say to uh, discourage consumption of demerit goods. You can say demerit goods are overconsumed in the market. Therefore, by taxing such goods, the government can discourage its consumption. That's all. Don't please the mind for questions like this. If you write paragraphs, the examiner can get mad. Okay. Ideal answer should be points like this. If you really want, write a small one line explanation. Never go and write three, four lines or big paragraphs, that, that, that. Your examiner is going to be very mad at you right? because they are also marking, remember I told, they are also marking hundreds of papers for an easy question like this where you write points if you have written pages and two pages of big study paragraphs, they are going to be mad. So make sure that is not done. Uh, to protect infant industries, okay, but not a main one. You can protect infant industries by giving tax exemptions, in, but then not a main. Okay. Now, then question number four. Mention the properties of a good tax. System. Again, mention. Don't have to explain. Also. What are the properties of a good tax system? 
there is uh, equity, there is uh, what? Uh, it has to be uh, what? Mm, you can say economical. Right? These are the main ones. You can say economical. You can say economy. Okay. Uh, certainty. Okay. Uh, neutrality. Okay. Uh, flexibility. Uh, then uh, convenience. Okay. So those are the main things that you write there. Uh, okay, yes, yes, simplicity, all of that. Uh, I think four is enough, kids. Four should be enough. But now, seeing you know, they are asking for a four mark question, which you can finish in 30 seconds. So you write all. At least, you know, uh, rest, show some respect to the question. Without writing four, you write all what you know. All what you know means don't come up with new, new ones. Write around uh, six below. And again, you don't have to explain this also. But if you really want, if you feel that, you know, not nice, now we'll write a small one, write small one line. Right? So equity means ensuring that the tax that has been charged is fair. You know, and then if you want, you can say there is vertical and horizontal equity. Uh, economical is uh, making sure that the cost of paying and collecting taxes is minimal. That's all. Don't write paragraphs. If you really want one small line, even if you write this, you will get your marks. But sometimes after studying so much for your levels, when you go and see questions like this, you will feel, feel bad. Then write a small line. Okay. Then uh, part five. Major components of recurrent expenditure. Are you? Uh, yes, efficiency and neutrality is the same. Major components of recurrent expenditure. What are the major components of recurrent expenditure? You have interest payments. I don't know why are they giving four marks for a question like this. You have interest payments. You have uh, expenditure on goods and services. Under expenditure on goods and services, main thing is salaries and wages. Salaries and uh, wages. And then you have uh, current transfers. Uh, we'll give a little breakdown. So current transfers, you can say there are uh, current transfers to households and current transfers to public corporations. So if you really want, not, not, not nice, no, they're asking for four marks, no, give some examples. Uh, households, uh, you can say uh, pensions, uh, some, you don't have to, uh, the ones I'm writing in black are just the uh, additional ones, pensions, some of the uh, interest payments. If you want, you can break down uh, domestic, uh, domestic interest payments and uh, foreign interest payments. You can break down a little, okay? Uh, that's more than enough. The black ones are not needed also. Even if you give the red ones, you should get your full mark. Is that okay, guys? 2016, question number five. All right, fertilized subsidy can be. No problem. Okay. Mm, give me a second. Uh, in three minutes, so there is nothing else, right? Recurrent expense, there are mainly three components. There is nothing else that you can write. So it's a four mark question. Maybe they'll give uh, two marks or something. Or they'll give one and a half, one and a half, and one. Right. You can't invent a new recurrent expenditure. That's all. Okay. That's 2016. Pretty much a very, one of the very uh, easiest uh, papers. Now, this I'll give you guys this is a small trick, right? Now, I did A levels in 2017. 2016 unit number eight question was very easy. So I, I also thought ah, 2017 will also be the same. So I, uh, during the last month, I, I have studied everything. Last month, I uh, stopped uh, studying unit number nine and 10. And like a fool, I thought, right, look here, I will go full in with unit number eight. Whatever they ask, I will ask. Question was actually hard. I'll show you the 2017 paper. You will realize the questions are way harder than the 2016. See, 2016, what did they ask us? Uh, first question was to draw the external. Very easy. Second question was public goods and why can't market provide them? Uh, third one was objectives of taxation. Fourth one, uh, properties of taxation. Uh, fifth one, 
expenditure required. Yes, I had to select that because I didn't feel confident writing question number uh, nine, question number eight, the from unit number nine and ten, because in the law I studied it last month. I just left it. So please don't make that mistake, guys. Don't at the last month. Don't uh, leave one thing off. In twenty two seventh question was easy. Yes, maybe. So if last year usually I'm not saying always. Usually, if a question is hard, the last uh, easy the last year, the next year it is usually hard. Twenty sixteen was easy. We look at twenty seventeen. Okay. 